Hello, friends. Today we will draw a Christmas composition using a sketch technique. For this project, we will need a pencil, two brushes size one and four, an eraser, and most important, watercolors. I used a brand called White Knights. Don't forget about plain water and a napkin. Begin with a simple sketch of a mug located in the center. Choose the size you like and decide what color the mug will be. Start off by drawing a square and work it into an eclipse. Work on the insides of the mug. Feel free to draw because any mistakes can be erased. Okay, good job. Moving on to the handle. Try to make it round and beautiful. No worries, you will manage it. Don't draw the handle too slim. Step by step. Okay. On the bottom of the handle, draw an angle. Round up any places that you think are necessary to. Next, draw a heart in the center of the mug. Instead of a heart, you can draw anything you like. A star, a flower or something else. Our mug has a border. It's a half oval. Take your time to draw it. You will get it. Place a few berries near the mug. One should be bigger and another smaller. Draw a circle and remember the smaller one will be the berry behind. Next to the berries, continue with drawing a branch of a holy tree. The first leaf will be bigger. Mark dots to show the edges and fill in the gaps. Note, the edges of the leaves are to be sharp. One leaf and another leaf a little smaller. Great! Moving on. Inside our mug, we will place marshmallows, a caramel stick and a few berries and leaves. Friends, did you know that in some countries, a symbol of New Year is a fir tree or a Christmas tree, but in others, it is a holy tree. You can see it on greeting cards, on presents, and on our today's project. When we are done with the leaves and the berries, it's time to draw the candy stick. Remember how it looks? It has a round shape. Don't hurry. And don't forget to show the stripes on the candy stick. Later on, we will color the stripes red and white. Okay. Right next to the caramel candy, place a cinnamon, 
just behind it. Use an eraser to get rid of any unneeded lines. Don't forget to brush away all scraps of the eraser. Next, sketch a star. It will be on a stick, like this. I decided to add a little bit more leaves. One here. Second there. Almost done. And most important, the marshmallows in the center. Friends, please comment below if you like marshmallows. At any time, feel free to use the eraser to erase any mistakes. It's important to erase all unnecessary pencil strokes because they can be seen later on under the watercolors. Okay, all done. By the way, do you know that marshmallow is a very popular treat? Take two crackers, place a marshmallow between and give it a little bit of heat. You can add hot chocolate to make it even more delicious. Finishing off our sketch by drawing stars. One goes on the bottom right side, the other to the left in the center of the mug. Okay, now we can move on to the painting. Take the middle sized brush, dip it into water, and remove any unnecessary moist if needed. Don't be afraid to take too much water on the brush, because watercolor paint loves water. When the paint dries, it will lighten a few tones up. Besides water paint, you can draw with markers, gouache, or even mix up techniques. Draw the way you like most. Experiment with colors. It is now important to fully fill our drawing with color. Start off by the leaves. Now, moving on to the mug. I decided to make my mug red. Please comment what color your mug will be. And don't forget to add a lot of water. By the way, do you know a game Chappie and Bunny? For the game, you will need marshmallows. Gather with friends and one by one put marshmallows in your mouth. The winner is who can put as many marshmallows in his mouth and pronounce Chuppy and Bunny without falling out the mushrooms. Give it a try. Okay. Almost done the mug. Fill in the mug's handle with the same color. Friends, don't hurry, do everything precise. 
follow the pencil borders. Now, I will mix the red color and add a little bit of orange. Earth color for the berries. Don't forget to leave out a little bit of space for the highlights. If you took too much water, wipe the brush on the napkin to remove any excess. Well, once our leaves are done, moving on to the candy stick. Color it red and white, taking turns. Repeat the form of the candy. You will get better and better with practice, so try experimenting. Add markers, glitter, believe me, it will be very interesting. The stick of the star will be a light brown color. Don't forget to color it. And moving on to the cinnamon stick. Friends, by the way, do you like tea with cinnamon? Okay, doing good. Now, the marshmallows. In real life, marshmallows are white, but we can't leave them like that. So take a pale blue and gently color them. Use enough water, otherwise it will be too bright. Okay, perfect job. And lastly, the heart. I decided to make it blue as well. Tell me what color you would do it. Next, we must draw the shadows. All objects have a shadow, right? We have to decide where the light falls. If the light is here, the shadow will appear on the other side. Use black and blue for the underneath shadows of the mug. Gently, gently and carefully showing the shadows. Did you manage? If yes, great job. If not, don't be upset. You will get it next time. Now, well done with the shadows. We have to let our drawing dry, otherwise the colors will mix up. Finishing off the shadows. Okay. Now, our drawing is dry, so we can proceed with the second layer. The second layer will be done with darker colors, painting out the tones and the shadows. We have decided that the shadow is to the left. So be brave to color. Don't be afraid. No worries, you will get it. When it dries, it will brighten. Draw the shadows on the edge of the mug, on the left side, don't forget the borders. 
and draw the shadows in the gaps between the marshmallows. Looking good. Draw the shadow on the handle in the inner part. The heart also has a shadow, so don't forget to color it. All the leaves have shadows. Remember to color darker the leaf that is behind. The leaf that is closer to us will be brighter. And the berries. Friends, do you know that marshmallows begin their story from ancient Egypt? In ancient times, marshmallows were used to treat cough. People learned to make it more sticky texture that we know nowadays. That is how it became the candy you are familiar with now. Tell this story to your friends. I am sure they will be surprised to know. Okay. Friends, remember to mix the colors around. We never draw with one color. Try playing with tones. Choose what you like best. Practice and you will learn to mix the colors. I mix two greens to reach a new greenish tone. But it's up to you if you want to paint the pastel and calm texture, you can skip this part. Don't forget to comment below what you like in the smug most of all. I like the candy stick. It's hard to imagine Christmas without the caramel sticks, right? Working on the leaves, taking our time. Use plenty of water. Watercolor paint loves water. Almost done. Going back to the cinnamon stick, don't forget to draw the shadows. Good job. Add color if needed. Friends, did you notice how the watercolors dry quickly? I find it great. Now, add in shadows to the marshmallows. Trace the edges and gently smudge. Simple and beautiful. Great job. And now, the biggest marshmallow. Remember the story about marshmallows? Would you want your medicine to be sweet? I think it's a great idea. Making the leaves brighter. I remind you that the leaf is called holly leaf. 
It is the most popular Christmas decoration that you can meet everywhere. Mix brown and red. Never draw shadows using just black. It looks very harsh and untidy. Try mixing black and brown instead. You will come up with very interesting shadows that look realistic. Okay. Mixing up the colors. Almost done. As we draw, the brush repeats the form of our object. Don't forget the stars. Using light brown, draw the star shadows. Can you see how they become bright? Next up, the cinnamon stick and the star on the top. Add color if needed. Friends, did you notice how quickly watercolors dry? I think it's great. When we are done with the cinnamon stick, move on to the mug. Be sure to check out all the leaves are colored. I decided to add a little bit more color over here. Moving on to the mug, we must make it vivid. Take more paint, mix. And don't forget where the shadows are to be. Notice, all objects that are closer to us are brighter and those that are far away, more dark. Remember this helpful tip. For my mug, I took red. You can take blue or any other color you like. Oh, look how bright that looks. It already gives me a Christmas feeling. By the way, friends, what is your favorite color? Don't forget to leave the inside of the mug a bit brighter. Don't hurry, try not to mix up the colors. Remember that they are wet and can collide to each other. Take your time. Add water if needed. If accidentally colors mix, Use the napkin to collect the excess paint, just like this. Comment below what are you using, pastel colors, watercolors or maybe wax chalks. By using different techniques, you will make your work unique. Now we are moving on to the handle. Remember, practice makes perfect. The mug is ready. And I can already see how it spreads Christmas mood. Almost done.
don't forget the borders. Okay. A sketch like this will be a great present. All handmade is very valuable. Friends, sisters, brothers, mom and dad will be very happy to receive such a present from you. Do you like watercolors? I love them. It is so easy to use. Going back to the leaves, giving them texture. Mind the corners, they must be sharp. Adding shadows to the leaves on top. One by one. What a beautiful work we have. Oh, we can see that some colors mixed up, the red and the green. No panic, take our napkin and remove the problem. Water paints are easy to fix if any mistakes are made, just like that. And refill the green. Note, watercolors love only two layers to be drawn in. It should stay transparent and gentle. Add in a bit of black and mixing it with the water. As you can see, our heart also has a dip. We will fix it in a moment. As before, using a napkin, fix any disadvantage. Now leave it to dry. Now it's time for the marshmallows. Adding brightness to one side, I'm using a greenish blue color. The borders will be darker. It's also great to draw with markers. If you are more experienced, I recommend using markers. Add water to erase any smudges. Do it before the paint is still wet. Now moving on to the berries. Please note, leave some space on the berries to imitate highlights later on. One berry, second berry. Great job. Well, I guess it's time to show the shadows under the mug. The shadows make the drawing more realistic. So never forget about the shadows, my friends.
very pretty. Remember, moving closer to the object, add more color to the shadow. As you are moving away from the object, the shadows are to be more light and transparent. Remember this rule, it will be helpful in the future. Add water if needed. And smudge. Smudge it out to make it nice and transparent. Repeat shadows on the cinnamon stick. Take brown and black, mix them together and fill in the gaps between the marshmallows inside the mug. One here. Another one there. This shadow is to be darker than all the other shadows because there are many objects that drop it, right? By doing this, we can see the deepening outline. Mind the borders. Take your time. Good job. By smudging slightly the lines, we reach a realistic effect. Be accurate, no hurry. Okay. All done. Finally the border. Make a thin line. Good job. The heart also has the borders, don't forget about it. Moving on to the center of the heart, Make it more transparent and light. Now, we will be moving on to the stars. Don't forget where the light falls. Imagine if this mug was real. You can take a real mug, put in marshmallows, cinnamon. You can replace the holly leaves by Christmas tree branches. Taking time on the leaves. I took a darker green. The smaller leaf is darker than the bigger one. Don't forget to let them dry. One by one. Repeat with all the leaves. One by one, almost ready. Is 
Isn't this a fun project, friends? I love it. Okay, now I'm mixing the red and don't forget the candy stick, it also has shadows. One underneath, right to the bottom, just like that. The white parts also throw a shadow outline, so don't forget about it. In real life, all objects are voluminous. Adding a bit of black to it makes it realistic. Now to the border. Mind where the light falls? If you have a mug, place it in front of you and it should help you see the real light repeat and the shadows. Experiment with objects. Use your imagination. Leave out the highlights. Slowly working out the highlights of the mug. Good job. If necessary, add water. Almost done. Don't forget to show the shadows on the top. Now we will leave our mug to dry a bit. Do the stars, adding shadows to them also. The one on the bottom. The one in the middle and on the top. Don't forget about the handle. The shadow is where the handle touches the mug. Take your time, no hurry. Step by step, we are almost there. Now, let's proceed to the shadow under the mug itself. Work through carefully. To make it more realistic, Remember to mix up colors. I decided to add a little green shadow that falls from the leaves. This is called the reflection effect. Okay. A little shadow there, a little shadow here. Smudge the edges to make it more realistic. Moving on, lastly, we have to draw the leaves texture. I took dark green. Great job. One by one, draw the leaves to make them filled with color. Almost there.
And all we have to do now is the two berries. Friends, mind the highlights. While drawing the berries, leave out space for the highlights. Just like that. What a beautiful Christmas painting. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe and press the like button if you enjoyed watching this video.